Ladies and gentlemen, as you no doubt know if you're watching this video, a new version of Minecraft Java Edition has been released. 1.16.2 is here. There's already a video on my channel about all the gameplay changes and another video about all the loot changes. This is the last one in the trilogy of this update. Here are all the technical changes in this version, ranging all the way from pack changes, command changes, data changes, to an overview of the changes for the customizable world generation. My name is Sly Slime, welcome to join me on this journey through the technical changes in 1.16.2. Let's start with an overview of meta changes for packs. The current pack version has been raised to 6. Because the versions are always the same, this applies to both resource and data packs. For data packs, verify that your pack works with this version as usual and raise your version to 6. For resource pack, the version increase is motivated by the changed format of walls. If you have replaced block models for walls, then you will need to update those to work with pack format 6. Another meta change that might be interesting is that both pack selection screens will now properly display the contents of pack.png as the pack icon. That means that now you can have pack icons for data packs as well. Let's get into changes to commands. The spawn point and set world spawn commands have an added angle parameter as an optional parameter at the end of the command. If you specify this angle, then that is the world relative angle that the player will be facing when they respawn. You can also use a tilde marker to get a relative angle. The execute in the specifier for the execute command now respects dimension scaling. That means that if you are in the other world and you run execute in and then use relative coordinates, those relative coordinates will start at your overworld location divided by 8 in X and Z. If you execute a command in the nether, but execute it in the overworld or the end, then the coordinates will be scaled out by a factor of 8 instead. And finally, effects for the slash message command. If the game rules send command feedback is disabled, now message will still show the feedback about you sending a message. Data changes in this version. The hide flags field now has the added ability to hide the dyed field on leather armor. You can now change the baby status of all types of entities using the data commands even after they have spawned. Bug fix for data, player heads of the same player would always have the same skin texture even if they had different saved texture data that is fixed in this version. And armor stands set to marker will no longer render themselves and their equipment dark if they are inside a solid block. Couple of advancements fixes for this version. The player interacted with entity trigger would not trigger if there was only one item and that item got consumed in the interaction. That bug has been fixed in this version. And using distance within predicates now works once again. Let's talk about tags. Entries in tags can now be marked as optional. If an entry is optional and the game fails to resolve that entry, then it doesn't cause a failure to load the entire tag. To mark something as optional, instead of specifying a string, specify an object with the required field set to false. There are three new block tags in this version. They are mushroom grow block, representing all of the blocks on which mushrooms can be bone milled into a large mushroom regardless of light level, and then base stone nether and base stone overworld, which are used from within various world generation features to figure out which materials can be replaced as part of the world generation process. There's an item tag that has changed names in this version. It is Furnace Materials, which is now called Stone Crafting Materials, and it is also used in the crafting recipe for the brewing stand now. Structure and jigsaw fixes in this version. The structure size and offset is now correctly handled for dedicated servers. This means that the structure block interface now properly works for dedicated servers as well. The jigsaw block user interface has been fixed a little bit. When hitting the generate button, it will now properly save all relevant values, apply all of those and close the window to generate the structure. Some changes to text components. In specific, there is new support for some new Unicode characters in the default font. There are a number of fractional characters as well as a number of emojis representing things in the game. They are a dagger for a sword, bow and arrow for a bow, axe emoji for an axe, trident for a trident, fishing pole for a fishing rod, test tube for potions, alembic for splash potions, shields for shields and then stars with left and right halves filled. For resource pack. The sad label that appears when you don't have any advancement is now possible to translate via a language file. And a bug has been fixed where the hat layer on helmets would detach if a piglin wore that helmet. 
And that leaves us with custom world generation. Because this system is absolutely enormous now, I will not be going through all the details here because that would take many, many hours. Instead, we are doing that separately in a separate tutorial series called Crafting Custom Worlds. That has been a little bit on a break now while the game has finished stabilizing these formats. But now as this version is out, we will be picking that back up and continuing. In changes from Minecraft 1.16.1 to this version, Custom World Generation and Dimension Settings now use the same folder pattern in data packs as other resources. That is your namespace slash the type of the resource that you're replacing slash whatever the name is dot JSON. There's also now the ability to replace settings of vanilla dimensions and other entities during world creation. That means that, for instance, you can put something under Minecraft slash Dimension slash Overworld dot JSON to replace the settings of the overworld. The grander news is that there is now experimental support for a world gen folder in data packs that has a number of subfolders with a huge amount of things that can be replaced or added. Worldgen slash biome can contain custom biome definitions. This is an absolutely enormous bit of data that you can define almost anything in a biome in the game with, so we won't be going through exactly everything and how to use this. But as a quick overview, a biome can contain the structures that start in that biome, the mob types that spawn there and the costs for them spawning in case there are less mobs than usual in that biome. You can also configure how the terrain is built, both with a surface builder and carvers to carve out caves and similar. You can define which features are placed in the biome and in which order. You can also control some various superficial things, such as the sky color, water color, precipitation type, and ambient sound effects. This also goes several layers deep, so all the things that are mentioned in that biome can also be configured in separate folders. There's a configured carver folder that contains definitions for the world carvers. There's a configured feature folder that contains definitions for feature placement configurations. And there's a configured structure feature folder containing definitions for structure placements. There's also a configured surface builder folder that contains definitions for the surface builders and a couple of folders for jigsaw and structure definitions. There's a template pool folder that contains the pool definitions for jigsaw structures and the processor list folder that contains sets of block processors that are used at structure placement time. All of this means that you can now add completely custom biomes to the game. These biomes can either be used in a custom dimension as it is, or you can load that data pack into your level and then select your custom biome as a single biome world, a cave world, or a floating islands world. World in slash noise settings, referenced from dimensions, contain configurations for how noise is used to build dimension. This was previously all inlined in the dimension settings, but it is now available as its own thing. As you might understand, there's an immense amount of complexity possible here, and we will be going through all of that in the Crafting Custom Worlds tutorial, so stay tuned for that one. In other changes and fixes, for the multi-noise biome source, you can now specify the noise parameters, and that also means that they must be specified for the thing to load in. A change has been done to dimensions where the shrunk boolean property has disappeared and instead there is now a coordinate scale. That scale is set to 8 for the nether which previously had shrunk equals true and 1 for the other dimensions. This represents the scaling of each coordinate in the nether being 8 times as large, you could say, as each coordinate in the overworld. But you can also create dimensions where scaling is completely different. The possible values here range from 0 0.00001 to 30 million. Dimension types now also have an effects field. This describes the dimension effects which is used for things like sky rendering and fog settings. Currently the only available options are the built-in types Minecraft colon overworld, Minecraft colon the nether and Minecraft colon the end. Finally, one notable bug fix is that if you left out any structure parameter from your worldgen settings, then that structure would generate as frequently as possible rather than not at all. That has been fixed in this version. Now all of this does not come with any documentation, however there is a reference, and that is the vanilla data pack. You can download that separately, and there's a link in the video description down below to download that pack. And that is the end of the changes for Minecraft Java Edition 1.16.2 Tech. 
I hope you found that interesting. If you're interested in the gameplay changes, then check out the main update video for 1.16.2 as well. Other than that, I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching. My name is Sliced Lime, and I'll see you next time.